Like a good piece of classic literature, today's episode is a culmination of three events that just came together seamlessly. First, I was on a live stream last week on the Casual Watch Review channel. If you haven't watched the channel or if you're not subscribed, link will be in the description. Check them out. Second, I wore a watch to work and I got a compliment that, well, I don't always get compliments for my watches at work. And third, I read a review or at least an article on the Teddy Baldassar channel and it inspired me to kind of come up with an idea. And that idea is, I think I really hate microbrands. Well, at least most of them. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. And if you made it through that pretty contentious intro, let me explain myself a little bit. Microbrands, well, first of all, it's a vocabulary word that I just kind of don't like. And it's a vocabulary word that I just don't really understand. Because by definition, it's a brand and it's micro, which is kind of a way of just saying, okay, it's a brand that doesn't make very many watches. And thankfully, in the article that I was talking about earlier by Teddy Baldassar, which, you know, link in the description to the article that Teddy wrote, they define what a micro brand is, and their definition is actually pretty good. But they're kind of even in their definition talk about some of the problems I have with the name micro brand by itself, because there's outliers. So in their definition, they pretty much state that a watch is a micro brand as long as they don't have the machinery to make their own watches or at least very not very many of them so by their rules that would sort of take the fp jorns out of the equation because they're micro they don't make very many watches but they make their own that would kind of take moser out of the equation because similarly you know they kind of then differentiate that those watches are independent brands so then you get into this debate of what the hell's the difference between independent and micro and I hate to say it, I think it just comes to price. Micro brands, by somewhat of a subtle definition, they're relatively inexpensive watches. And that's kind of what brings me to what I kind of came to a conclusion to of my somewhat dislike of micro brands in general. And let me explain a little bit more. So before we even get into the article, there's no way I'm going to go over 60 watches that Teddy Baldassar's group came up with as the best and or worst micro brands. But what I'm going to tell you, at least initially here, is what I don't like about micro brands is somewhat of a general rule. If it's an inexpensive watch, but not that inexpensive, I feel like people are kind of shooting themselves in the foot. If you buy two or three micro brands at $1,000 a piece, you just missed out on being able to buy yourself a $3,000 watch that might be a heck of a lot cooler. And that's kind of my biggest fault with micro brands. And I'm going to go through a couple examples in Teddy's list here. And I'm going to tell you why, in a way, I just don't like them. Because generally, going through this list, I don't see any watch that inspires anything new. And the few micro brands that I've owned and the few micro brands that I like... They bring something new to the table, and they bring it at a very reasonable price. For example, the watch that I'm wearing here is actually on Teddy's list. Not this particular one, but the brand. This is the brand Loom Tech. Horrible name, Loom Tech. Ugh. But I mean, it's a great watch, and it's really cool. What I did or loved about this watch was that this watch is made out of tungsten, and it came on a fully tungsten bracelet, which... You match that watch to that bracelet and you're wearing a brick on your wrist. But it's just so neat that there's a watch manufacturer that made a sport watch or a cool looking watch. Yes, it's obviously Panerai inspired, but it's made out of solid tungsten. And at least in my view, that makes what's kind of a micro brand cliche of being somewhat homage because I'm going to show you quite a few on here that are just copycats of more expensive watches, but at least they added something new to the equation. They made it in a rare metal. They made it in a unique metal 
they did something different. And if micro brands will do that, I will like you as a micro brand. If you just make a watch that looks like an old antique watch or a watch that is from a more expensive brand and you're just making a cheaper color and throwing or a cheaper version and throwing some fancy colors on it, I'm going to stick to my rule of I just don't really like micro brands. So the first micro brand that Teddy mentions is actually in the perfect sweet spot of a brand that I just don't really know what to do with. Yes, they are absolutely a micro brand. Yes, they have something a little bit unique that they bring to the table, but is it unique enough to justify the price? I don't know. And that's Anne Ordain. And this is their Model 1. And I mean, it's a beautiful watch. I really love the Fume dial. I kind of like their somewhat syringe style hands. And I think the general layout of the watch is actually very pleasing. Is it worth almost $2,500? Uh, that, that's the tough part. I mean, that's a pretty expensive watch. It's it's a tough one. And that's, that's where micro brands just kind of get in trouble with me is you're paying a lot of money and sometimes you're not getting that much out of it. Here, yes, you're at least getting something that if you're walking down the street or you go to a watch event, someone will say like, oh, that's a pretty cool dial. So you are getting a little something for this watch. And that's why I say, I don't hate Anne Ordain. I think they're pretty cool. I think they're a little overpriced. So I just kind of gave an example of a brand that's sort of in the midway point of, I don't dislike, but I don't really like. Now I'm just going to go full on into the, I don't like. And I found three brands here that at least popped up initially as what I was talking about with just being somewhat of a overhyped homage. And one of those brands is Manta. The other one I'd never heard of before, and that's La Adventure. And the other one I definitely have never heard of, and it's Isa. And congratulations, guys. You've all just made Submariner clones. I mean, maybe there's more to this than I see on general first look, but these watches just look like boring Submariner wannabes. And that's exactly what I have problem with this kind of micro brand. You're not bringing anything new to the table. Why do you exist? Micro brand to me means that you should be small batches of something kind of cool. And just making a homage watch at a more accessible price point doesn't make you cool enough. I, I just think you need to do more. And if you do more, as I said, you can go into at least the Anne Ordain category of being better than just kind of bad. And well, we've still got a couple more that are going to go into the good category. But before we go into the good, I guess I do need to point out a couple more of the bad. I mean, this video is called I Hate Micro Brands. So these are kind of the watches that I just generally don't care for, or at least don't care for very much. And I'll give you a quick reason why. So the first two I'm going to make a little commentary here is on Brew, and this brand that I'm not even sure really how to pronounce, I'm assuming it's Mean. But both of these watches, they're just 70s throwbacks. So Brew, you're just taking a watch and you're putting it in a classic 70s TV case and you're putting some bright colors on it. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't do anything for me. The Mean brand, at least the one here pictured, it actually looks like an old vintage Crator that I've seen before. Kind of a little bit inspired by some angles of a Royal Oak. And once again, it just it's just a copy of older times and other shapes and I'm guessing it probably comes at a cheaper price point and if these truly are very inexpensive watches I guess I'm not as offended but my hunch is these are still probably going to be 500 a thousand hopefully not two thousand dollar watches because at that point you should buy something else so the last two that I'll just make a general I'm not too fond of is the deep blue which do we need a more expensive Seiko and or Citizen Diver? What role does this watch fill? Why is it different enough that it should exist? I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but it just looks like every other dive watch. I, I don't know why the creators of this brand said, oh, I'm going to make a watch and I'm just going to make it look like a Citizen, but it's not a Citizen. I don't get it. And similarly, here's a brand called Enth, and it 
just looks like a Pelagos. So I, I just, I don't understand the rationale for creating a brand to just look like somebody else's watch. And as a non-watch designer myself, I know if I was to ever build a brand, I would want my watches to be really interesting, whether they had an interesting design, an interesting material, or just something that made them unique. And that's what I'm going to at least try to point out in some of the micro brands that I actually do like. They did something that made them interesting enough to stand above their peers. And even though I mentioned it a little bit earlier, well, we're talking about my LoomTech here. And LoomTech did a really good job in the past where they made a tungsten version of one of their watches. They make lots of other watches and they make a lot of pretty standard watches. But at one point they were a bit inventive and they made a tungsten watch. They actually even made a cobalt watch. I don't think that worked well. I think people have a lot of allergies to cobalt because that, that watch didn't last very long. But they tried, and I will at least give them credit for that. The fact that they probably didn't keep making them means that they were probably cost prohibitive. But as I said, I, I think it's cool that they tried. And similarly, there's a brand out there now called Zelos. And I think they're doing some pretty neat things with materials. They don't have any currently, but they used to make some watches out of tantalum. And tantalum is one of my favorite metals. And unless you want to shell out tens of thousands of dollars for a watch, or if it's an FP Journe, $80,000 for a watch, you're not going to get your hands on tantalum very easily. So even though their watches themselves aren't that unique, they aren't that different from the rest. Most of their watches, if it's a dive watch, looks like a dive watch. But at least they did something different. Zelos to me is the brand that makes a tantalum watch at a reasonable, reasonable price. LoomTech is the watch that used to make a tungsten watch at a reasonable price. And that, as I said, is at least different enough that I think that's a goal that a micro brand should have. Do something different and bring it to the watch community. So a couple more brands that highlight at least a good side of a micro brand. And one of those is Studio Underdog. Personally, they're not for me. I'm not a chronograph guy, but I at least appreciate the shape and the style that they're doing, you can't find a chronograph out there that looks like theirs. And the fact that they just released their pizza edition, I mean, I think that's hilarious. It might be a little bit expensive for a joke, but anyone out there who wants a chronograph and wants it to just be a little bit fun, you know, you can get that with Studio Underdog. And so for that reason, you know, I'm proud of them as a micro brand. They're what I want my micro brands to do do something different, reach out to a unique segment, and I think they've really succeeded at that. On Teddy's list, he's got two watches on here that I don't really consider micro brands, and one of those is Christopher Ward. I think they make a great watch, and they make a great watch for the price. At this point, though, I don't think there's anything micro about that brand, so I don't have a good or a bad thing to say in terms of a micro brand. I just think they're a regular brand. And similarly, they also put Vortec Watch Company on here. I don't think taking classic antique pocket watches and putting them into a new case makes you into a micro brand. That's kind of the same as a case company that makes modified cases for G-Shocks. You know, we don't call those case companies micro brands. I think Vortic is becoming a micro brand with their new movements and their new actual watches. But at least at this point, I, I, I don't know if I fully count them as a micro brand, but they're working on it. And I've got to give a little love to a Japanese watch on this list, and that's Minaze. And I saw these in New York at watch time, and they're beautiful watches. Once again, kind of like the Studio Underdog, they're not for me. I'm never going to own one. It's not my style. They're a little too, too dressy. But at least going with my definition of what I want to see in a micro brand, they're unique. They've got hand-painted and or very interestingly decorated dials, interesting case shapes with windows on all sides. You know, you're not going to see another watch that looks like it. So 
as I said, not my style, but uh, I applaud them for being what I want a microbrand to be, which is somewhat unique and interesting. And two other big hitters in the microbrand world, well, they deserve a little bit of attention too. And the first one, I'm not that keen on, and that's Baltic. Baltic, I think, just takes some classic designs and kind of makes a boring watch out of it. Uh, it's not for me, but I can see where people get the appeal. They look like they make a really good quality watch, and it looks like there's some love behind it. So I'm not mad at them as a brand, but they're not for me. So Formex, this is a brand that I, I, I get, because the idea of it is they make actual innovations. Some of them might not be the most practical, like their suspension system. I mean, I think the watch is probably very shock resistant without it, but it's, it's an interesting idea, and it's something that they've put into their watches, and it's, it's an innovation. And an innovation in a micro brand is what I want to see. And also their, their clasp, that super adjustable clasp that they have, you know, it's magic. And, you know, if Formex can have a better clasp than Grand Seiko, hands down, that's pretty amazing for a micro brand. And that's the kind of innovation that I want to see. And the type of thing that a micro brand should do is bringing something extra special to the table. So that's going to wrap up my somewhat commentary to the Teddy Bulbasaur 60 best micro brands of 2024. I don't think there's that many bests. And that's kind of my opinion of micro brands. I am so curious to know if I'm in the minority in this. What do you guys think about micro brands? Do you like when a brand just makes a clone or a homage or something of another brand and slaps a different color and their own brand name on it? Is that enough to make a micro brand interesting? Or are you kind of like me where you want your micro brand to actually innovate? You want them to be different. You want them to be unique, special, something that makes that watch go, oh yeah, I want to shell out my money for that. Because as a longtime watch collector that I am, that's the problem I have with micro brands. I think if you buy five micro brands, you just missed out on maybe buying something a lot more special or a lot more interesting. If you buy really cool micro brands, I guess it's worth it. But most of the micro brands that I've bought, two or three later, two or three years later, I sell because whatever spark they had, they didn't really have. Maybe I got sucked into some hype. Maybe something about them was shiny or new or interesting, but it really didn't stay interesting. And that's kind of the problem with micro brands. I want them to be unique enough that 15 years later, I've had this watch for a long time. I look at this watch and I go, wow, that's really cool. There's still nobody out there that's making a tungsten sports watch. It just doesn't exist besides some really crappy, crappy clones. But that's kind of cool. And I hope there's more cool micro brands to come. So if you like this kind of episode, give this channel a subscribe, please. If you like this episode itself, give this video a like. And any comments or questions, leave them down below. And I'll catch you guys next week in a new episode. If you enjoyed this content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Please leave a like, or maybe even a comment or a question. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that, and it helps the channel. And speaking of helping the channel, I've got two avenues where you can donate to the channel. You can join right here on YouTube by becoming a YouTube member, or you can follow the link in the description and join my Patreon. Thank you, I really do appreciate it.